It was Maya Angelou who said, any book that helps a child to form a habit of reading, to make reading one of his deep and continuing needs, is good for him. You know, the library is the ideal place to find some very interesting books. You should check it out. And the services at our libraries are now digital to make reading much more interesting. We tell you more about that development. Plus, it's Heart Month, so we encourage you to take care of yours and look out for red flags that will tell you if something is wrong. I'm Theodore Henry, and this is Jamaica Magazine. Smarty out, they want you. Them not just want you, them need you. Yes, you are someone's type. So sign up today for the JIS Blood Drive and save a life. February 7, 58A Halfway Tree Road, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Just call 926-359-024 and sign up. Or email your name and contact details to radio at jis.gov.jm. JIS Blood Drive. February 7, you are someone's type. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, February 2. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says government will be rolling out strategic policies to address Jamaica's crime rate, in particular homicides. Mr. Holness, who was speaking at a recent Destination Experience brunch at Devon House, called crime the main hindrance to making Jamaica the center of development, sport and culture in the Caribbean. He said his administration would be ensuring that the rule of law was never challenged. We are making the investments in national security assets to put us in a position to cut the flow of illegal weapons into the island, to limit the movement and activities of gangs, to be able to intercept criminals in the act and to create a real deterrent. All of that is being done in addition to putting in place a new national security architecture that will better integrate all the crime-fighting resources, which are not all in the Ministry of National Security. Government will be merging the National Youth Service, NYS, Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, JFLL, and the Heart Trust, NTA. Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Senator Ruel Reed, made the announcement at this week's post-cabinet press briefing. Arguing that there's a lot of overlap in many programs offered by the three entities, he says the merger will eliminate duplication and enhance their efficiency. So what we're doing is putting all of them under one umbrella and expand the scope. For example, we look at the, some of the youth activities previously. We have more hard institutions across the island. So what we can do is work through those um, physical institutions for greater reach and impact. The Heart Trust NTA is a human resource training organization that focuses on technical and vocational skills. The NYS's core program offers career training and work experience to youth aged 17 to 24 years. Among other things, the JFLL offers the high school diploma equivalency for persons 17 years and over who did not successfully complete education in the formal sector. JFLL and the NYS will be absorbed under the operations of the Heart Trust NTA. Pointing out that this is in keeping with the public sector rationalization program, Minister Reed says the goal is not to cut staff. We, we believe that because education overall is under-resourced, that what we will use is when we rationalize, we can reallocate those resources to where they are most needed. The Jamaica Society for the Blind, JSB, has opened a low vision resource center at its old Hope Road facility in St. Andrew. The newly constructed center offers a wide variety of services, such as assessment of low vision needs, prescribing appropriate low vision devices and training in the use of these devices, as well as low vision counseling and public education. Executive Director of the JSB, Lola Marson, highlighted the need for such a facility. For the exception of a few affluent persons who may be over, able to access services overseas, the majority of Jamaicans living in, with low vision are not, are not as fortunate in that low vision service 
in Jamaica is virtually non-existent. The Low Vision Resource Center was built at a cost of $25 million. The Japanese government provided $11 million, while the National Health Fund donated $7.6 million. Governor General Sir Patrick Allen welcomed the result of their partnership. I am confident that the visually impaired and those with low vision and those whose financial resources put them at risk will be able to receive a welcome boost and see, and see new horizons for themselves. The Jamaica Cancer Society, JCS, is making an appeal for donations as it seeks to raise $20 million. The money will go towards purchasing a new mammography machine for its mobile screening unit used to screen for breast cancer. Our mobile mammography unit is currently down and we need to raise 20 million Jamaican dollars to get it back on the road. We are inviting the public to play their part and pledge a financial donation towards this target. The JCS's executive director was speaking at a recent JIS think tank. She says the society has already received a $10 million pledge from last year's Sagicor Sigma run towards the new unit which costs $30 million. Persons can make donations through the society's PayPal account or by dropping off a check at a JCS office in Kingston, St. Anne or St. Elizabeth. Donations can also be made at the Bank of Nova Scotia account number 800-472 and at NCB account number 241-639-207 in the name of the Jamaica Cancer Society. Meanwhile, the JCS will join with cancer organizations across the globe in marking World Cancer Day on February 4 under the theme, We Can, I Can. The key messages are, collectively, we can shape policies. We can improve access to early detection through screening. We can provide education and healthy lifestyle practices. Together we can build healthy homes, healthy workplaces, and healthy communities. And finally, Parliament will be prorogued on Monday, February 6, to make way for the new legislative year. The ceremonial opening of Parliament will take place on Thursday, February 9. Later that same day, Finance Minister Audley Shaw will table the estimates of expenditure for the 2017-2018 fiscal year. The budget debate will follow from March 9 to 22. Coming out of a two-day cabinet retreat last week, it was revealed that government will be focusing on economic growth and job creation in crafting the national budget for the next financial year. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Violence against women and girls is a human problem. Not just a woman's problem. It's a problem for men too. Gender violence takes many forms, including sexual assault, domestic violence, relationship abuse, sexual harassment, and sexual abuse of children. The magnitude of ongoing violence against women and children in our country is cause for alarm. We can end the violence. It requires all of us to end the violence. I call on all our men and women in Jamaica to take a stand. And men, especially, must get involved in this movement to create a better world for their daughters, their mothers, their sisters, their aunts, their uncles, their fathers, their sons, and for themselves. Let's protect and reassure. Let's unite to end gender violence. February is Heart Month and the Heart Foundation of Jamaica will be carrying out screening at health centers and on plazas across the island during the month. The first is on Monday at the Duane Park Health Center in Kingston at 9 a.m. But you can always visit their offices at 28 Beechwood Avenue, Kingston 5. Now, here's how high cholesterol can affect your heart. To lower your cholesterol, you need to try and have a, a diet with less animal fats and with more fruit and vegetables. Um, just be aware of, of what is a healthy nutritional diet. Um, also, try and keep your, your body weight in check and exercise regularly. Doctors say cholesterol is a waxy fat-like substance that occurs naturally in all parts of the body and can also come from the foods we eat. Nutritionists say cholesterol itself is generally good because we need it for the body to function normally. 
but there are ways in which cholesterol can be bad. Um, bad cholesterol would be things like if you have too much saturated animal fat. It's not that it is bad in its entirety, it is a quantity and the amount that is a problem. So we need to watch things like any dairy products, meats, those are the type of things that we need to watch for in terms of getting too much, but it's okay in moderation. Um, good cholesterol, we have a lot of plant-based, um, you know, unsaturated fats, you know, which are healthy for us. Good cholesterol protects us against heart disease, while bad cholesterol increases our chances of getting cardiovascular diseases. The bad cholesterol affects us by clogging up the blood vessels, for want of a better word. Um, sometimes we have blood vessels that maybe the inside lining has been damaged for things like, you know, cigarette smoking and so on. And certainly bad cholesterol would add to this by, by attaching itself to the lining and causing it to get blocked up eventually. This is a long process. It's not something that happens after one meal of, of you know, that is high in fat. <laughs> Unlike many diseases, medical experts say high cholesterol is often silent. That means you don't know you have it until you get tested because there are no symptoms. Sometimes, maybe the first time is when you actually collapse with a heart attack. But there are things that you can do that will make your cholesterol stay at a normal level and they involve making changes to your lifestyle. Eat foods with less fat and saturated fat. Take off the skin and fat from meat, poultry, and fish. Broil, bake, or roast instead of frying foods. Eat lots of fruits and vegetables every day. Eat lots of cereals, breads, rice, and pasta made from whole grains. Exercise every day. Lose weight if you are overweight. Stop smoking and take high blood cholesterol medication as prescribed by your doctor. Doctors say it is very important to have our cholesterol level checked early, at least every five years starting at age 20. For more on the business of good and bad cholesterol, contact the Heart Foundation of Jamaica at 28 Beechwood Avenue, Kingston 5, or call them at 926-4378. You can also visit any government health institution close to you. Remember, prevention is better than cure. Be health-wise. When criminals disagree, they seek revenge. Murder, arson, rape, whatever causes terrible suffering. It doesn't matter who gets hurt. Women, children, and the elderly, they are the main targets. Don't support the criminals. Don't cover up for them. Don't take their money. Take a stand now for the right of our women and children to be free from fear and abuse. Silence brings violence. A message from the Ministry of National Security. The Jamaica Library Service has been expanding its offerings beyond actual books on shelves to include digital books with their information communication technologies. The upgrade extends across parishes and provides customers with a more efficient service. The Jamaica Library Service, JLS, is expanding their service offerings to you. This is being facilitated through the Global Libraries ICT project. This project will boost the ICT resources of the JLS network, which covers 13 parish libraries, 106 branch libraries, and 376 mobile library staff. The Global Libraries project is a project funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in the USA and the Government of Jamaica. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation donated approximately two million US dollars to the project, while the government co-sponsored with approximately US 1.1 million dollars. This project is called JLS Using Technology to Empower Individuals and Communities for Development. 
The ultimate aim of the Global Libraries ICT project is to empower Jamaicans to lead more productive lives through access to approximately 800 state-of-the-art ICT resources available absolutely free across all 119 public libraries in Jamaica. Since the launch of the project in November 2014, we have also purchased over 800 state-of-the-art computer systems, including servers. We have also trained over 300 staff members in several critical areas, including advocacy, customer service, community engagement, and leadership. We have also installed 150 wireless access points across the island network, this will allow users to act, use their personal devices on the library compound. We have also conducted training for users in the areas of basic computer skills and also digital literacy. Marketing is also a critical component of the project and in order to further enhance the corporate image of the JLS brand, a new colorful logo was unveiled. A corporate slogan was also developed, JLS, transforming lives, empowering communities, as well as several other marketing campaigns. Advocacy committees were also established in order to create greater awareness of the value of public libraries to communities. For over 60 years, the JLS has been the heartbeat of the information flow as well as an educational research center for a wide cross-section of Jamaicans, regardless of age or social standing. The Jamaica Library Service is the single largest public library network in the English-speaking Caribbean. We provide a free public library service to all Jamaicans. The JLS Public Library Network operates through six regions, offering a wide range of programs including national reading competition, job readiness sessions, summer programs, homework assistance, free computer training, remedial reading, story hour and game sessions, We Little But We Talawa, Jamaican Foundation for Lifelong Learning High School Diploma Equivalency Program, Mock Job Interviews, Literacy Sessions, memory of the parish. National Reading Competition, NRC, is the JLS flagship program which targets two categories of readers, children aged 6 to 14 and adults ages 15 and over. The competition is organized annually and it aims to promote reading habits, good reading habits, and to expose participants to the various genres of literature. The JLS is currently running a membership drive from April to October in order to increase its library usage. Encourage persons to become members of the Jamaica Library Service and to provide an opportunity to reactivate the membership of persons that are dormant. To become a member of a public library is absolutely free and easy. Contact your nearest public library for further details. The JLS also meets the resource and learning needs of students through the School Library Network. The School Library Network of Jamaica Library Service has been providing a service to 900 government school libraries on behalf of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. The school library is very integral to students' educational development. The JLS will be keeping you in the know about all the happenings through its JLS Spotlight features that will showcase the various activities about the Global Libraries Project, as well as other happenings right across the 13 parish libraries. Now I speak life over this country, and we cancel every untimely debt. No more you pity them and go turn worthless, and fear to find money for send them go you take. I declare the greatest crop of future leaders rising up from this generation of youth. Holy men and women, visionaries here we speak it on a must be a godly fruit. So for the next 50 years of our claim to fame, say make this one thing remain. When we say eternal father, bless our land and guide us in the father's name. Keep watching Jamaica magazine.
Be an active participant in your child's life. Spend time with your child. No phones, no television, no distractions. Just the two of you. Just the two of us. Get to know your child through play. Why not go to the park and get on the monkey bars? Sharing a meal can also be a time of bonding. If your child's in school, be involved in school activities. Speak with your child's teacher, follow up on their progress in school and see how you can help. Assist them with homework, attend parent-teacher meetings and support school fundraising events. Remember, your child's future is in your hands. Safeguard it. So glad you are a child of mine. Let's now hear from the team at the National Solid Waste Management Authority on their plastic bottle waste separation project. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, has been partnering with the Japan International Corporation Agency, JICA, since 2004. Over this 12-year period, 30 employees from the NSWMA have been to Japan where they received training in areas that included composting, managing recycling facilities, landfill management techniques, sustainable solid waste for CARICOM countries, sustainable waste management for Caribbean islands, solid waste management A, which consists of basic introductory courses, and Solid Waste Management B, which consists of advanced courses. Beneficiaries on return submit a report and a proposal on the subject matter for funding by JICA under their follow-up corporation facility. One such project is the Solid Waste Reduction Through Waste Separation, Waste Diversion and Recycling Pilot Project. The Solid Waste Reduction Through Waste Separation, Waste Diversion and Recycling Pilot Project supports one of the main mandates of the National Solid Waste Management Authority that is to implement programs that will affect behavioral change. So we welcome this initiative. For the next six months, the pilot project will be in three communities, namely Caribbean Estates, and Caymanas Country Club Estates in St. Catherine and Rollington Town in Kingston. The project is estimated to be about $7 million, of which $6.7 million is being funded by the Government of Japan through the Jamaica International Corporation Agency, JICA. And as such, we are very grateful for this. In the coming months, we will be meeting with residents, hosting community meetings, attending the Citizens Association meetings, and basically encouraging persons to separate their plastic containers, their cardboards, and cans from their regular household waste. So we will be asking residents to take out these items and a separate truck will come and do the collection. And we will give these items to a third party companies. The learnings from this pilot project will assist the authority to develop policies and plans to guide and to help us to better manage solid waste and to get residents to buy into the concept of separating their plastic containers, their cans, and also cardboards from their regular household waste. So at the end of the project, we will be in a much better position to determine behavior and attitude towards separation at source, how to really convince and to influence persons, residents, to separate these items from their regular household items. On behalf of JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency, I'm pleased that NSWMA hold this pilot project of waste reduction through waste separation, waste diversion, and recycling. This project is planned by a senior planning officer of NSWMA who had participated in JICA training in Japan titled Sustainable Solid Waste Management for CARICOM Countries. After he returned from Japan, he planned it based on what he'd learned in Japan. I am happy that JICA can assist this project and the JICA follow-up cooperation program. Also, the amount is not bigger than 6.5 million Jamaican dollars. Uh, JICA has been offering several training programs uh, to NSWMA since 1980s. So, so far about 30 NSWMA staff had participated in these JICA training programs. This is a good government initiative 
based on a sponsorship from the Japanese government. Um, it has allowed us to be one of the pilot projects. And we, the citizens and the residents of Caymanas, are grateful for this project because it allows us to sort our garbage, especially with the PET bottles. These are a continuous growing source of concern for our garbage collection with regards to blocking our drains and causing havoc in on sea life. NSWMA Solid Waste Management has given us the bags so that it will encourage residents to carry out their bottles and put them in a central area that will be collected once a week. We will be sensitizing the residents based on the fact that it will encourage us to reduce our solid waste disposal. We are taking up the plastic bottles, which we call the pet bottles, for recycling. So what we do, we separate them from the regular garbage in order to have the community be in a better environment. We, will, we have collections at the primary school, the Rollington Town Primary School, at 17 Montague Street, at the fire station, and Arcot Road for now. But we are enlightening the rest of the community people about this project. It will help the community in a, in a vibrant way because less garbage, less bottles being around, um, seeing that we have the Zika virus around, this will also help to decrease the, the, the mosquito-borne disease being, being harbored around. I think it is a phenomenal first step in the direction, right direction that Jamaica needs to go, um, engaging the community. Um, Recycling Partners, as you know, uh, fully endorses the program. And um, as we mentioned, we will continue once uh, your test period is done. Uh, we are committed to continue cleaning up those neighborhoods and collecting the bottles. And um, we'll also use it as a test pilot for other communities that we are hoping to bring on board. Waste separation is the way forward, and the NSWMA, through our partners, is working to make this a way of life for all. Psst! Smarty out there want you. Them not just want you, them need you. Yes, you are someone's type. So sign up today for the JIS Blood Drive and save a life. February 7, 58A Halfway Tree Road, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Just call 926-359024 and sign up. Or email your name and contact details to radio at jis.gov.jm. JIS Blood Drive, February 7. You are someone's type. We're at the end of today's show, and I hope you found the program very informative. Let us know by sharing those views via Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or send us a tweet at JIS News. You can also log on to our website, jis.gov.jm, to view this program again or for new information. Until tomorrow, when we bring you another Jamaica Magazine, I am Theodore Henry, on behalf of the production crew, saying take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.